you all. Good. Good afternoon. I like that. Thank you, Kathy. Welcome alumni, friends, and fans, and to those watching around the world on YouTube on TTU Sports One. So that's our YouTube channel. Always tune in. People are watching from around the world for today's press conference. I'm Tennessee Tech Director of Athletics, Mark Wilson. We're excited to host today's press conference as part of the Tennessee Tech Alumni Association Wings Up Weekend. So a great opportunity for us to tie in with uh, the Alumni Association to introduce the 13th head basketball coach uh, for uh, Tennessee Tech. You know, one of the things that's always uh, special uh, about uh, Tennessee Tech is uh, the involvement. And I want to start off before I have Dr. Phil Oldham come up is just talk about uh, the involvement. We had lots of people that helped us uh, in this search. And uh, before we get started, I want to thank uh, our alumni and donors and supporters that helped, uh, that uh, participated on the panel, uh, that helped Tennessee Tech in the evaluation process of our head coach candidates. So uh, those of you that are here, just give a quick wave. I see you around the room, so give a quick wave and let me recognize you. Thank you. <laughs> to begin our press conference, it's my pleasure to introduce President of Tennessee Tech University, Dr. Phil Oldham. Well, thank you, Mark, and thank all of you for, uh, for coming out this afternoon for this great announcement. Uh, this is a big day for Tennessee Tech. Uh, we welcome Coach Pelfrey and Tracy and their family to our community. And Mark said it pretty well. That even though he and I made the final decision, I guess, this was, a, this was a community process. I mean, there were a lot of people involved in this selection process, and I really appreciate all the time and effort that so many spent to help us identify the ideal person to lead our Golden Eagles forward in, in men's basketball. And we continue to be incredibly bullish on our basketball programs, both men and women. We're excited about this new page that we're turning. We're excited for these uh, young men that, uh, that have shown such incredible promise and uh, enjoyed watching them this year. And I know that uh, we got great things in store for them because our commitment is to these student athletes. Uh, the fans, we love our fans and we got a great fan base and that'll continue. But ultimately it's about the student athletes having the best possible experience they can have and having an opportunity to showcase their talents and develop their abilities to all new levels. And I'm absolutely convinced that, that John Pelfrey is the guy that can make that happen. So thank you for being here today. Uh, thank you for supporting Tennessee Tech and Tennessee Tech Athletics. I appreciate all that you do and all the support you give. I look forward to being with you in the hoop this coming season as we uh, see this team in its new version and uh, cheer them on to a lot of great victories. So thank you and wings up and welcome, Coach. And now I think probably uh, the most important part of this ceremony, uh, and it's, Coach, it's not you, okay? <laughs> but Tracy, can you come up and join me quickly? Tennessee Tech just wants to bring you, give you a, a, a quick welcome gift from Tennessee Tech Athletics and Tennessee Tech University. It's my pleasure to introduce uh, the first lady of Tennessee Tech uh, men's basketball, Tracy Pelfrey. Athletics is a family affair. Um, those of us that are athletic administrators, uh, coaches, we know the sacrifice that our spouses and our sons and daughters make. And I'm thrilled that, uh, that uh, Coach and Tracy's uh, son and daughter are here with us today. So we have a, a, a gift for, uh, for Coach that uh, we're going to give to uh, Jackson and Grace. So Jackson and Grace Pelfrey, come on up and join me, please. Coach, we haven't had a lot of people wear 34 here at Tennessee Tech, so I appreciate our staff that did the digging to find an old, an old 34 that we could turn into a, a, a Pelfrey jersey, so excellent. 
Um, this weekend, as you walked in, you know, the Evelyn Center wasn't set up in normal uh, basketball mode. It was set up for, you know, Windows of the World, which is a university-wide event that will take place tomorrow. I encourage people to come experience that. It's a tremendous uh, university and community event. And that's what uh, Tennessee Tech did in this search. We looked around the world uh, for the next leader for Tennessee Tech men's basketball. Uh, and I think it is fitting today that we had the press conference as part of, uh, you know, Alumni Week and as part of the, uh, the, the windows of the world. Um, a lot of people have asked me, you know, what were you looking for in a, in a coach as you, uh, as you began this search and you, you went through this search? So I'm going to give you some of the attributes that, uh, that we were looking for. First and foremost, we wanted to find a coach that wanted to be the head coach at Tennessee Tech. Not a head coach at Tennessee Tech, but wanted to be the head coach. At, at Tennessee Tech and certainly uh, in uh, John Pelfrey we found that he wants to be the head coach at Tennessee Tech he wants to be the head coach of uh, of these young men just not a head coach he wants to be an impactful uh, head coach uh, we wanted experience and uh, in John Pelfrey we found a, a gentleman with tremendous experience over 25 years of experience both as an assistant coach and as a head coach and uh, that was really attractive to us the level of experience that he's had and the success that he has had is all the stops that he has been at. We wanted somebody with strong recruiting ties to the Southeast. That's critically important. That's where we find our student athletes and especially our men's basketball student athletes is throughout the Southeast and someone with really strong recruiting ties in the, in the Southeast. We wanted a man of high integrity and uh, you know in today's day and age in college basketball there's lots of things that are going on that are not good for college basketball. John Pelfrey is one of the greats in college basketball with great integrity, with great character. And we wanted that at, at Tennessee Tech. Uh, we wanted somebody that had a great personality that would uh, engage with the community, engage uh, you know, with, uh, throughout the state with high school coaches, throughout the, the Southeast with high school coaches. And uh, those of you that don't know John Pelfrey, he has a warm, warm personality. And uh, after I first uh, met John, when uh, he and Tracy and I had, had breakfast, um, one of the things that uh, I came back and told, and told my staff is that he's humbly confident. And your warm personality comes across in that way, Coach, is, is humbly confident. And I think that's uh, just a tremendous trait uh, for our head men's basketball coach to have. Of course, it's, I can't even say it, right? Academics, academics, academics. We needed a coach that was committed to academic success of our student athletes. They're going to make their life after Tennessee Tech, after basketball, based on their academic success here at, at Tennessee Tech. And John is highly, highly committed to academic success. Committed to, to building the total person. It's not just about basketball. It's not just about academics. It's about building the total person. And John Pelfrey has a proven track record of building young men in the, in the right way. We also wanted a coach that was going to provide a, an exceptional student athlete experience while pushing them to each reach whatever their individual potential is. As a, as a man, as a student, and as an athlete. And uh, John Pelfrey uh, embodies uh, all of that. Uh, a track record of compliance, okay? That goes back to uh, the integrity. He has a track record of, of compliance, and uh, we did significant uh, research on that, probably more than he even knows that, uh, that, that we did. But that's really important to Tennessee Tech is that when we win, we win the right way. Everything that we do, uh, we do the right way. We wanted a coach with a coaching acumen that will uh, propel Tennessee Tech to Ohio Valley Conference championships. That's what uh, our, our young men, they want to win championships. You as fan want to win championships. I can tell you there's nobody more driven than uh, John Pelfrey to, uh, to, win, to win championships. And the last thing that we we're looking for, we wanted the perfect institutional and, and community fit. And that is John Pelfrey. It is my pleasure to introduce the 13th men's basketball coach in Tennessee Tech history Let's give a big Tennessee Tech welcome to head coach John Pelfrey. Thank you, Mark. It's, um, it's a privilege to be here. I want to thank all you guys for being here. Before I get too far into this, i got a few thank yous i got to go through. First of all, kind of where I came from here just recently. with uh, We had tremendous leadership back in Alabama with Greg Byrne and Dr. Dr. Bell. Um, 
obviously there's an Alabama family that I, I was there with for, for three years. Uh, Antoine Petway, Yazia Roseman, Clark Holter, Tiffany Grimes, Rachel Rutherford, Brittany Price, Alex Aceta, Garrett Walker, Jacob Walden, Amanda Pappleton. I just want to say thank you to you guys. You guys made me better. Um, I think, um, but last but not least from Alabama, the players. Uh, they gave me a chance to recruit you, uh, to coach you, to develop deep-rooted, intentional, deliberate relationships. Uh, some, you know, the, our relationship's not ending. Um, it's only beginning. Uh, to my parents, they're here. It's, uh, I really appreciate you being here. The two best coaches I've ever had. You guys heard me say that in the, in the interview process. My brother, my best friend, my closest confidant. Uh, his wife, Julie, and, 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 and Lane, one of his daughters, Lenny, is here. I appreciate your, your all support. My sister, who's not here, Jackie, uh, she makes me want to be a better brother every day. My aunt is here, who is also like my, my sister growing up. She's not too much older than I am, but uh, that's another story. We'll worry about that later. Thank you. Jackson and Grace, you guys gave me the great gift of being a proud father. Um, and my wife, Tracy, who... Uh, She's my greatest treasure, and, and I really appreciate you making my dreams yours. So, um, I think lastly for me, to um, before moving on here, just want to say thanks too to to the previous coaching staff, Coach Payne. Those guys worked extremely hard. Um, I have not heard one thing about how these guys went about their business, how hard they worked, and some of the young men that they have brought in this program as a testament to that. Now, um, for me, uh, I'm here because of Mark Wilson, uh, the way he pursued me. Um, ever, I've never gotten a job that I had to call on. And matter of fact, it wasn't so easy for he and I to get hooked up at first. There was, there was a little bit of a communication breakdown. Uh, we're not going to all that today, but um, you want to be someplace where you're wanted. You want to be someplace where you can have a relationship of trust uh, and honesty uh, with your boss. And I believe I can have that with him. I know I can, and he's the reason why I'm here. Obviously, President o uh, Odom and his wife Carrie, um, I think they have a tremendous relationship with Mark. And I have to thank you for allowing me to be here. I think there's great alignment. And they want this basketball program uh, to be really good. Just like every other athletic program on this campus, uh, they're gonna, they've made a commitment and they want to support that. Um, we were looking for a home. Um, we weren't, you know, desperate for a job, uh, but we were desperately seeking a job where, or seeking a place uh, where we could go and be involved and learn, lead, and take on challenges. And we feel, we really feel like um, we found a home, and that's important too uh, for us. We feel really good about that. Um, the other thing we were looking for is is when you want to learn, lead, and take on challenges in college basketball, there's a piece of wanting to build something um, and build it the right way and to compete for championships and, and more, than any, more importantly, to build a team, to build a program, uh, to build relationships with these young men uh, to help them grow and become leaders, but also to be a part of this community. And we're very, very excited about that. We'll talk about a lot of things with our players uh, about what we value, and hopefully we'll get a chance to get started with him here next week. But for me, having a chance to, to uh, be a head coach before, I, I, I really believe this. I think a lot of guys, there's a lot of really good coaches out there. There's a lot of guys that can recruit. There's a lot of guys that can fall in love with the logo. The thing that I've been on a quest for learning about for the last eight years since I was last in this position, um, it's all about leadership. I really think everything rises and falls on leadership. I think we've had a chance to grow in that area. And I want to be a part and build something where we can put this thing together based on the right DNA, set a culture, and let me be responsible for setting healthy boundaries and guidelines and hold everybody accountable. Staff, players, the whole deal. Um, I, want, I, want to, I want this to be something where it benefits everybody. This is not about me. This is not about me at all. Um, this is about the players, 
first and foremost. It's about our staff. It's about this basketball program. It's about our fans. It's about this community. And I'm looking forward to the challenge of, of being one of the people responsible for trying to set healthy boundaries and provide leadership uh, so we can all learn, grow, and get better and take on those challenges in college basketball. And hopefully when this thing is, is built the right way, and we have a chance to compete at the highest level, and we win, it's going to be something that everybody shares in. It'll be a moment in time that these young men won't forget. It'll be a special moment for our team, our program, the school, and our community. We've all been a part of situations where you are cheering for a team, maybe you're on it, you witnessed it, you saw it, and it changed you. That's the great thing about athletics. It's a great thing about basketball. Um, it's taken me a, you know, a long way. My dad told me uh, when I was growing up, and first of all, I broke my mom's heart when she, she found I wanted to be a coach. She wanted me to be a doctor, a lawyer, or, or an engineer. And they told me how long I was going to study to be an engineer, and I said, that's not going to happen. Maybe I'll practice basketball that long, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, but he said, you're eventually going to have to get a real job, man, and go to work. You're going to stop this playing. And it, for me, it's not a profession. For me, it's a passion. And um, um, so I'm so excited to, to be a part of that. But mindset does matter. I think mindset, uh, and the guys are going to hear this, but I think everybody needs to be a part of it. Mindset matters. Talent will let you down. Talent and experience will let you down. Okay, I think it's a great separator of individuals, players, and groups, teams. I think it's our competitive advantage. There's a couple of things that go with mindset. One is self-awareness. Who am I? What can I do well? Where do I need to get better? What is the group expecting of me? Self-awareness is all about getting better. The other piece of mindset that matters is self-discipline. It's the action. It's about hard work. It's about doing what I don't want to do and I know I'm supposed to do it. When everybody else is out having fun, doing on the fun street, wherever that is here in Cookville, no, it's you getting in the gym. It's you lifting weights. It's you saying no to that stuff because greatness doesn't happen in front of everybody. It's not pretty and it's not easy. It's tough. It's ugly. It's when the lights are out and it's you trying to, to, trying to chase greatness on your own, self-discipline. I think some other things we're going to look at but that I value that we're going to talk about with our young men and everybody needs to understand is we're going to try to focus on the present moment, the here and now. There's so many things that distract us today that we don't have any control over. We want to focus on what's important now. And so many times, that is our effort, our energy, and our attitude. Nobody else gets that. Nobody else gets that. That's on us. We own that, and we're responsible. Um, for me, right now, it's a privilege and honor to be here. You know, through the process that we went through, um, I really appreciate the patience that everybody showed with me uh, during this time. We were going through our season. We also had some disruption where we were. Um, there's obviously a process that Tennessee Tech was going through to find their coach. Um, when I got here, and you guys may or may not know this, but there was, it was a real, real process to go through. I, was, I spent 12 hours one day meeting with people. And for some, it might have been daunting. But for, for me, it gave me tremendous confidence. I started getting stronger as I kept going to meeting after meeting. And the reason was, and I shared this with Mark, that had I just come in here and met the president, met the athletic director, maybe met the team or a few key people, I don't know if I'd have walked out of here with the feeling that I have today. Seeing everybody, listening to them, hear their stories, the people that work here, the people who came here and never left, the people who were from here had no desire to leave. The, to hear from the former players who loved this place beyond measure now all of a sudden I came to the realization that this is a place that I want to be at because it's not about me. I cannot do this on my own. But I really believe together there's nothing that we cannot accomplish. I think it's all on the table. I'm excited to be your basketball coach and I can't wait to get to work. So if anybody had any questions, I'd be more than glad to answer it. <laughs> yes, sir. Questions from the media first. Scott, Scott, do you have anything? Or? Okay. Any, any media members? Okay, then we'll open up the general questions. I think Leo, were you first there? No?
First of all, I think the thing I'm going to do first is I'm going to develop a relationship with these young men. Um, I need to get to know their hopes and dreams. I want to know what they want to do so I can partner up with them um, to help them get there. Um, we're going to work together. Somebody's got to be the leader, but this is going to be a partnership. So I, I got I to get to know the players. And I, I called them uh, when this came out. I told each and every one of them that uh, I know it's going to take some time for me to earn your trust and respect, but I'm going to spend the time to work on it to do that. So first and foremost, I think everything starts with a relationship, and I've got to communicate well with that. Um, I think that uh, training now comes into play. Uh, we've studied this a lot since we've been away from this position on how to practice, how to develop uh, skill level, um, who to recruit, how to hire. Uh, there will be nothing done that, that we won't put through our no stones left unturned vetting process. Uh, we're going to ask great questions. We're going to extract every piece of information we can. Uh, we're going to be very intentional. We're not just going to talk, but we're going to we'll hear what these guys had to say. Um, and then we're going to work really, really hard at it. We're going to have a specific style of play, a system of execution of how we want to go about doing that. We want to fly up and down the floor. We don't want to hold it up. We want to try to beat the defense up the floor. The best way to score is in a broken floor situation before the defense gets set up. Certainly we understand we're going to go against good teams where we'll have to be able to operate against a set defense, whether it's man or zone. Uh, from a defensive perspective, we're going to want to press in the full court, but we're going to want to shrink it up in the half court. We want to really kind of utilize that clock and put the teams up against it. Um, we want to play with discipline and fundamentals, uh, which goes back to how we practice and how we train. Um, part of the recruiting process will be looking for guys with the right DNA. Uh, absolutely, you can't win the Kentucky Derby with a mule. I get that, okay? <laughs> You've got to find a certain level of talent. But for me, uh, it's more things that I find great value to our toughness and resilience and the ability to, to uh, have love and care in the locker room, to put the team first, to go to school, to uh, be respectful to teachers and everybody in the community, um, to be willing to sacrifice for, for, the, for the good of the team. I may have to do less so the group can do more. Uh, we want to identify these things in the hiring process and the recruiting process. I think when you get the right DNA, that sets your culture. And when you have the right culture, anything is possible. Obviously, it's my job to, to communicate well, to set those healthy boundaries, and to hold everybody accountable. Um, you know, I'm not walking through this door promising championships. There's a lot of heavy lifting that needs to be done, okay? I know that because I know how these guys feel a lot of times, too. Um, I lost my head coach in college. I know what that feels like. Was, uh, there's a lot of emotional ties uh, to, to the former coach. Completely understand there's a relationship there. Here's a new guy, okay? Uh, does he kneel, know my name? How do I fit into his system? What are his plans for me? All that stuff is fair. Um, but I also think, for me, I owe these guys everything that I can to come in and develop a relationship with them like I recruit them, and, that, and that's what I'm going to do. Um, but I think also we've, we've gotten really specific about who we want to be around, how we want to go about doing it, and listen, our way is not for everybody. That's okay. Uh, but this is ours, and we believe in it. Um, but talking about winning championships, I don't think you win championships um, in the last four minutes in March on the road at one of our great competitors. I think we win that game or a championship in the last four weeks of summer school. And that's when it's gonna start. Every day matters. We need to, uh, as part of what mindset is, we're gonna have a thing we call the code. The code is a, a mental method of, of, of operating about how we wanna stay in the moment. It's know your job, do your job, and understand why it's important to do it a certain way. It's really important. Know your job, do it, and understand why it's important to do it a certain way. That's your responsibility. It's your responsibility to give tremendous effort and do it with great mental and physical toughness. It's your responsibility to have a great attitude to, that's always taking care of your teammates and taking care of Tennessee Tech. If you can do those three things, you're in the present moment. When you're not focused on those three things, you're in the past, can't do anything about it or you're worried about the future, and there's nothing there but a lot of anxiety and fear, okay? So we're gonna try to, we're gonna try to operate as much as we can in the present moment on the next play. And I think if we can do that, and we can be dominant on each possession 
on each day with school, on being respectful to everybody, on taking care of our teammates, winning will happen. It will be a byproduct of how we conduct business on a daily basis. I delivered it pretty good, Tracy. <laughs> One thing, the reason I say it's kind of an inside joke. See, I've had, I haven't been the leader of a team. There's obviously a, there's a, there's places for all of us to step in in leadership, right? No matter what, no matter where we are on the totem pole. And I've had a chance to do that at a couple of different great places. Obviously, going back to Florida with Billy from the second administration was great. Um, Billy, you know, outside of my, my brother, my father's probably the most influential male in my life. Uh, we think a lot alike. We value the same things. Um, but in Alabama, obviously, Avery coming from the NBA, there was a, there was a lot of opportunity there to, to kind of bring value to the program. Um, but there's still things as a leader, right, that you can't just go out and do it. That's the head coach's responsibility. So when I would be reading or learning or studying or trying all this stuff and having these deep root relationships with the players and it gives me such energy. It, it, I get excited about it and then I want to share it with somebody. Well, they've had to share it for eight years now. So I, I, <laughs> they've heard this before. They're, they're, they've had enough. They've already heard this, this speech from me. So that's what that was. Yes, sir. We're doing good. We got two young men here that um, I think are almost through our process. Um, is it okay to ignore him or no? Uh, Alex Fain is here with his wife, Turner, and son, Fitz. Alex, you want to stand up? He'll be one of our coaches. Blake Gray uh, will be our director of basketball operations. We are in a relentless pursuit of two more coaches. Um, we're excited about that process. Obviously, we're not through it yet. Um, but um, I guess something's really important to me. I'm spending a lot of time on it. Um, I shared this with somebody the other day. The people that I'm talking to about potential hires aren't just a, they are not just professional relationships. I mean, it's not some coach that I really don't know, maybe has, I have great respect for, who's, who's just an awesome coach, but I really don't know him. The people I'm leaning on are the people who have a personal relationship, people who I know are invested in me and care about me, uh, therefore they would never give us anybody uh, that would potentially hurt us, but they're we're getting people. We're going to have high-quality people who are going to represent us very well. Yes, sir. Oh well. <laughs> uh, my wife would go for that. <laughs> Thank you. And no <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you very much. It's very kind of you. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know it's interesting. Yeah, that's that's um, that's going to take me a second. Like I said before, my two best coaches are my parents, and I'm very very fortunate they're still here with me today. And, what a huge day it is for me to have them here with me, to be able to share in this moment. Um, I cannot tell you how appreciative and thankful I am of you guys to, and all of you to, 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 to let this, to make this a possibility for us. But um, these guys don't know this. They're, they're way too young. Probably a lot of people in the room are too. But I needed great coaching, and I got it. I had great coaching. My high school coach uh, was 28 years old, and he was nuts, and he played me when – I was borderline an eighth grader and a freshman. It wasn't a very popular decision to do. I go to Kentucky, Eddie Sutton signed me to college basketball as a player and as a coach. At 24 years old, he gave me my first coaching job. Uh, Rick Pitino came in and his first three years at Kentucky were, were my last three. Um, it wasn't always great there. I was a part of the only losing season in the history of the school, uh, okay? Uh, but also, it, it was a great lesson because one year was this, and the next year was something completely different. Mindset changed. Players didn't. Mindset did. Um, so Coach Patino taught us everything about work ethic and, and no stone left unturned and uh, leaving no perspiration in your body. Um, I only wish we had a 20 hour rule back then. <laughs> I tell this story all the time. We practiced so long on a Saturday, I got hungry. Uh, so. Um, and then obviously on that staff was uh, 
Billy Donovan, Tubby Smith, Ralph Willard, Bernadette Lock Maddox. I mean, these are icons uh, in the game. And um, so for me, um, I would say Billy probably shaped me more than anybody. Uh, when I went with him at 25, I think it was, to Marshall, um, I was sitting in my office and I had a legal pad and a phone. And, and it was a desk phone, it wasn't a cell phone. And uh, I was like, oh, this is great, I'm an assistant coach. I'm a full time, I get to go on the road recruiting, do all these things. Yeah, exactly, silence. Now what do I do? <laughs> and then for the next six months, I went in his office and I worked off the corner of his desk. He was kind, he was generous, he was patient. Taught me everything there was to know about recruiting. Uh, we went to Florida and just started uh, recruiting and falling in love with the logo and working extremely hard with player development. And then all of a sudden he starts uh, playing around with pick and rolls in college and nobody kind of really done that. And then they say, you know, he's setting two of them. And then there's all of a sudden there's pick and roll motion and the ball is never getting stuck. And I left and went and tried all this stuff on my own. And it was a wonderful experience at South Alabama and Arkansas and very, very appreciative of all the things we learned there. I went back to Florida for a second administration and the players were good, but they weren't like we had before. I mean, we had pros, we had just guys that were lottery picks. But when we went back, they played like pros. And we were able to create culture. And we, were got, we had these relationships with guys that we, they allowed us, they got vulnerable with us, they allowed us to get to know them. And what happened was, we still had bad days, bad moments, but we never had bad days. We may have got to a bad start. But they started coaching. They started coaching each other because they they knew what made each other tick. They started to learn about the situations in their life and what made them respond and react in certain ways. Um, that was monumental. Going back and learning that piece, he, you know, Billy's just really curious and smart, and he's willing to go to the ground floor and and build himself back up. Um, that piece, I think, really got me on this journey of leadership and understanding relationships. So with all that being said, I would say if anybody, the, the guy that's affected me most, and not to take anything away from the others, because they're all great in their own right, and they're probably at least two of them in the Hall of Fame, and Billy will be soon, but I would say Billy. Any, yes. further, any further questions? Yes. Bill, recently, uh, with a lot of the elite teams now are recruiting really good. You know, I think recruiting has changed a lot um, with for a number of different reasons. I think uh, you, so many guys transferring, you know, uh, it's it's an epidemic. It really is. Um, and I think it's because of lack of relationships. You know, guys um, bounce from AU Pro to AU Pro. They bounce sometimes from high school to high school. Now they're bouncing from college to college. Um, heck, fire. Even some NBA guys bounce from team to team. Um, so um, I think from a, but still, I think everything goes back to relationships, communication and a, and a relationship. Um, I'm excited about our opportunity to recruit. I love our, lo our geographic location. Um, there are a lot of people, basketball players, student athletes, um, that I think that we're going to be able to attract from a high school perspective. I also think that um, you know, there's an opportunity with four-year transfers. I mean, we've, we've talked about this some. And, um, obviously, everybody has to be vetted out, but you can find the right information on a high school player by asking the right questions, right? You get even more information on somebody who transfers from a four-year school. I think if you're going, anytime you start taking transfers, though, I think you got to have a recruiting philosophy. Um, there's no magic to recruiting. It, it, it is a way of, it's, it's an approach. It's... Um, not so much a formula, but an understanding of what works. It's easy to go out and recruit, but can you get the guy? That's the whole point. Um, you you want to spend your time and resources in a place with a young man that you can get. You have to know that, you have to understand that. Uh, we've got a, a, a way of life, we've got an approach to recruiting. Uh, we will evaluate all those different levels, all those types of young men that fall in those categories. But I think for me, I, Love player development. Uh, as a high school player, 
uh, Coach Patino changed my career. He changed my life. Um, I wasn't good enough to play as a freshman. I had to redshirt. Um, he came in and, and took me from one place as a player to a completely another through hard work and skill development. Um, I also think that you know there's nothing wrong with somebody who makes a makes a mistake and, and a decision and goes and transfers. There's nothing wrong with that. Guys can a second chance at life, so to speak. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. Sometimes they grow up. Maybe they got themselves in a bad situation. Maybe they made a bad choice. Um, that's any of us. I handle my recruiting completely wrong. We don't have time today to get into that, but but uh, that happens in recruiting. Um, but I'm excited about the, the about the the student athlete that we can attract here. I think we've got a very good academic situation, which is going to allow us to take a, take advantage of that piece as well. Um, but it's all going to come down to recruiting. It's all going to come down to asking the right questions. And who can we establish a relationship with that wants to be a part of what we got going on here? Because we really believe this is something special, that it's just different today than it ever has been. Um, and that's because of these guys. They are committed to, to doing the things that are necessary uh, to support this program to help us go to a different place than we've ever been. And that's why I'm excited about it. So and a lot of that will be on us in terms of the way we deliver the message to student athletes. Time for one last question for everybody. One. one final round of applause for. Thank Dr. you, guys. Thank you. So, thank you all for being here today. Thank you for those tuning in around the world on TTU Sports One. Uh, Logan, I see you here, and Scott, media members first for uh, one-on-ones with Coach Pearl Free, then everybody's welcome to come on up and introduce yourselves for a meet and greet. Thank you, and wings up.